I'm pretty sure wherever you are, school is out or almost out. Maybe you don't have kids, your kids are grown, or you're a grandparent now, or the neighbor's kids classify as your own. It's a shifting time of year regardless, now that Memorial Day has arrived. I'm thankful and I'm encouraged by both of these each year. I recently started riding my bike again. I did for a short amount of time last year, but the year prior, I was weak in my arm from my melanoma surgery the previous year. In fact, speaking of that, I have something I want to share with you. May is Melanoma Awareness Month. I shared this on my Facebook the other day, and I wanted to share it with you too. This is what my post said. It started off like this. Do you have any moles that have changed shape, size, or color? The dentist I worked for years ago would ask each patient at their regular checkups. As odd as my young mind thought, it proved itself and saved my life. As this month draws near to closing out, I want to encourage you by telling you May is Melanoma Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Why do I tell you this? In 2020, I was diagnosed with melanoma under my arm, bra line if you want to get real specific, a place the sun doesn't typically get. Me and my dermatologist laughed. I had just celebrated 20 years cancer-free from fibromyla carcinoma, a liver cancer. A month prior, you can imagine my discouragement. I made a joke with my surgeon because small world of C's, but the same one who did my liver resection 20 years prior, did the removal of my melanoma too. I joked at the milestone we made, but wasn't happy to celebrate with him as I sat on his operatory table that day. Days later, he did his surgical magic once again and I left and I was left with all the emotions and physical stuff to wait through as I waited to see if it had spread to my lip notes. Thankfully the call came in and it had not spread. I've since then carried on as normal as a person can. Still don't have full functioning strength in that arm but I'm working on it. Doctor appointments are still part of my social agenda, not by my choice. I'd like to share with you a few videos I made that year documenting my melanoma journey. Don't mind the nose hairs in one episode. Let me say this first. I share to make you aware and encourage you. If you have any spots of concern on you, a loved one, family, or friend, get it checked. Don't be afraid. Early detection is key and potentially could save your life. Not only did the Lord use the knowledge of the dentist years ago, but also the encouragement of my husband. In one last nudge of a YouTube video I watched before, I had this one spot checked out. I was like, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear, Lord. I'm going. Man, if we would just listen, he's pointing the directions out for us all the time. Then I shared the video links, which if you would like to watch them, I'll have them posted in the description for you here on this video where you can go to the playlist to find all the uh, episodes about my melanoma journey. So on my bike ride, I tend to listen to podcasts. This is usually the only time I really listen to them. So it's been a good two for one experience for me this week. I listened to a couple episodes of my friend, Dr. Jen Bennett on her podcast called She Impacts Culture. I met Jen a few years ago in a book launch team. And then I managed her first book launch team I managed her book launch team for her first book called Be Worth Following, hashtag Be Worth Following. 
I had a big desire to keep, uh, to keep managing book launch teams, but the following year my daughter got married and my time was full of all things wedding. Then darn COVID came along. A family friend, a, a few family mishaps in my melanoma journey. So needless to say, launches got sent to the back burner. The other podcast I've recently listened to is called, Hey, It's the Luscos. One of the episodes was what your daily devotion is missing and what to do when your prayers aren't answered. This time on my bike while listening to these episodes to the such wisdom is refreshing to my soul. Do you listen to podcasts? If so, what are some of your favorite shows that you like to listen to? In today's episode here on my channel, Piece by Piece, I have been itching to take all the small pieces that I can find in my little junk containers over here with all the pieces of paper and materials and lace and burlap what you name it I've been itching to take some of those smaller pieces and just piece them together one by one almost in the sense of what I pick up goes down but of course you see me sitting here digging through stuff but I took each one of these and I really didn't know where I was going with it but I kind of carried out a theme the whole way through of finding pieces that you know were vertical there and kept just testing them almost like I was working a puzzle to see if they would fit by size and everything so you saw me at the beginning of the video where I cut off of a piece of box from some granola bars and I wanted to use a piece of cardboard for this project and so I took it and I cut it got ready and took out these pieces and laid them out so I could be ready to create with them and so I'm using my Mod Podge to put them in place I tried to have as many pieces um, as an option out as I could as I worked, but every now and then I would have to stop and take a look at some other pieces to see what I had available. Once I got this little stack of papers I did just now on the right hand side there, it kind of helped me get the ball rolling. I was needing just a few more options because I wasn't feeling it with some of the other pieces that were out there, which sometimes when I set out to be, do these goals, I'm like, okay, whatever you touch goes down. But then I get over there and I start working with it and it doesn't feel right, so I always go back to doing what feels right to me. So I just have to sit here and sort through some of this. And it was fun to see some of the pieces that I ended up actually using because it's stuff that I've been holding on to and collecting. And, you know, sometimes whenever I do collect stuff, I'm like, are you really ever going to use this? So it's fun to see those pieces actually come to light. Then I felt like I, some of my pieces were starting to get a little bit bigger compared to what I'd first been starting out with so I tried to keep the balance a little bit and not get too too big but I um, like how a while ago on that part that was the purple that I kind of turned to the side because it fit perfectly there that way not everything is going exactly in the same direction kind of provides a little interest that piece right there was a tag that come off some Brussels sprouts. I tried while I could to salvage some of that Mod Podge and push it along that way whenever I got other pieces I could kind of use what was on there 
it gets kind of messy working with your hands with that stuff. Let me say this, maybe you don't know quite what to create. Maybe you've been collecting pieces of papers or just odds and ends. I would encourage you to take the time to create something like this. It was very therapeutic and gave me a moment of creating for the week. My favorite part was finding a home for this little stamp. I didn't find a place for it then, but I'll tell you a little secret before this is all over with. I do end up finding a place for it, so it will be part of this end project. Maybe creating is your only time and means of refreshing your soul. If so, that is exciting. And I would love to hear what you are working on, what you are creating, whether it's in your art studio or within your home. I know that it is really exciting for me to share with y'all each week what I have going on. And as with anything else in life, this is just a small portion of what takes place in my studio. I really loved seeing by the end of this project the final outcome because it's nothing that I dreamed that it ever would be but to look at it all put together was very rewarding. I hope you enjoyed watching and seeing the end result. See you next Monday.